two. All right, so we're live from the Syrian border. Syria is right behind me, actually. Um, we're going to go live in a, just a couple minutes with Pastor Jack and myself. Right now, we're just testing the system. Um, or we will stay live on this signal. Um, bear with us in a few seconds. Jack? We've got signal here. Oh, yeah. People are already online. Um, I need someone to hold it like that. You guys, and you can pray too while we're talking because we have no idea what we're doing. You, you can see yourself right here. See? Okay. So. Gather up. It's warmer over here too. That's a selling point. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are live on Facebook already. We've got hundreds of people already watching us from all over the world. And one of the reasons we wanted to come live on Facebook is because we are on the Syrian-Israeli border. Um, and in light of the last um, news uh, of the 59 Tomahawk uh, cruise missiles that were fired out of two American naval ships off the coast of the Mediterranean to an, uh, a Syrian air base from which all those chemical attacks were uh, carried, um, we wanted to update everyone uh, live here from the Golan Heights with obviously the biblical um, aspect of the current events that are going on because we're not newscasters and the, the, the point is not to give you the latest news the point is uh, to prepare the people of God for what God is either doing or allowing to happen in the world yeah listen when we read our Bibles we want to be careful when we read the scriptures because we don't want to speak into them that would be wrong we want the Bible to speak to us and coupled with that is an understanding of history. It's great. You know, I didn't care about history until I became a Christian. Because then I realized it's his story. God is writing to us, not only, of course, in his word, but as he deals in the affairs of men. And what we're seeing right now is something that is to be understood more and known. What do we know for sure? We know for sure that behind us, Syria is embroiled in a great civil war, over 500,000 people slaughtered by their own government in these last recent years. We now have Russia in the vicinity. As of this morning, we have the United States in the vicinity. Amir mentioned 59, the last thing I saw, now just tipping over 60 cruise missile launches to very strategic sites uh, in Syria. Listen, everybody, where the Syrians are launching, Assad uh, warriors are deploying these chemical weapons against the rebel groups. Who are these rebel people that we're talking about? These are, these are Syrian people fed up with the Assad regime in the mix. And you may hear some gunfire or tank fire behind us is ISIS as well. There's a lot going on. But all of this taking place, you have to pull back a little bit with Scripture open and understand that nations are being formed. Nations are being drawn into a place. And right now, you've got the United States involved in what's happening here now. And at the same time, you've got the United States looking into North Korea and what's happening there. That's probably not a good thing for America. But uh, we found out this morning that there's a new president in the White House and he contacted Vladimir Putin, two hours before the first tomahawk was launched. And, and, he's, and Benjamin Netanyahu. And Netanyahu. And he said, we're launching. We want you to know we're launching. He didn't ask for permission. He said, we're launching. Someone, he said, has got to do something about the genocide taking place in Syria. And no one's doing anything about it. And what was Vladimir Putin's report now in the Moscow Times hours ago? Putin now says... We want everybody to understand we do not support everything that Syria does. 48 hours ago, Putin said, we stand behind Syria. <laughs> what is happening? 
friends, that's leadership coming out of America. And there's people, listen, irregardless of our Facebook audience right now and irregardless of you, listen, let's stop thinking about ourselves. There are people in that country behind us, Syria, that are rejoicing that help just might be on the way. Hope, because someone's defending the rebel forces against the side. And just so you know, Israel has a field hospital that is allowing the Syrians that are wounded, in, on, at least along our border, to bring their wounded people and we take them to our own hospitals and we treat them. Then we, once they're well, we bring them back here. The Syrians in this part of Syria knows exactly that Israel is actually on their side and, and not on, on anybody else's side. And we're on the side of the innocent civilians. And when Israel is launching any strike in Syria, Israel is not taking side in this civil war. We are not allowing that smoke screen of the civil war to allow Hezbollah to receive advanced weapon that will be game changing weapon from either North Korea or Iran. And, and we, we, our eyes are on them the whole t You know how people are doing, you know, you know, I'm looking at you. Yes, throughout this whole thing, our eyes are on the Syrian military and on Hezbollah, which is a proxy of Iran and is now more yeah. in Syria than in, in, in Lebanon itself. More soldiers of Hezbollah are on Syrian ground than, uh, than in, 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 in Lebanon. Two weeks ago, we carried a drone attack, actually right here in this town, and we killed the local commander that was recruited by the Hezbollah to build a Hezbollah slash Iranian task force task force right here along our own border in other words iran wants to be <laughs> yeah. along the borders Absolutely. with israel and we're not going to let that happen Absolutely. you guys were standing in the golan heights uh, land previously occupied by syria listen uh so strategic and might i add on your way up in the buses beautiful gorgeous right um, listen, Barack Obama demanded that Israel give all the land that you just drove through for the last hour back to Syria. <laughs> well, imagine if that would have happened a few years ago. Imagine if that would have happened. The truth of the matter is, it would have been a disaster for the Israeli people and for the, for the stability of the world because what would have taken place would have been now ISIS would have been here. Ladies and gentlemen, prior to Israel regaining control of this area, Syria would launch rockets into those uh, Jewish towns that you and I were driving through. Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee, routinely received rocket attacks. Okay, since Israel has recaptured this area, there's been peace. What kind of peace? Those of you on, on uh, Facebook right now, you can't see behind me. Some of you can't see, but you will in a moment. I find this ironic. The UN hates Israel. The United Nations has condemned Israel more than any nation on earth at the UN in New York, okay? Right now, North Korea, other nations, uh, Iran, they get away scot-free, no human rights violations or condemnations. Israel, they're getting attacked all the time by the UN. And right now behind me, I'm looking at him, right there, is a UN observer. He's got his computer out and his high-tech stuff looking. Ladies and gentlemen, what side of the conflict is he on? Is he in Syria right now observing? Or is he in Israel? Israel? You know why? He's not even wearing a helmet. He's safe here. He's safe here because that guy knows what CNN knows but will not report. When that guy's done with his shift, he's going to spend the night in Syria. Is he going to go back to his hotel in Israel? Israel. He's going to eat. Listen, he's going to eat different. He's going to sleep different. And in the morning, he's going to come back here where it's safe and observe what's going on. Listen, the world is spinning hypocrisy to you guys and lying to you, and yet the UN condemns Israel over and over again, but this UN observer knows exactly what side his bread is buttered on. Are you, you understand? Remarkable hypocrisy. And you're here looking at this. Remarkable. I also want you to know that according to the Bible, the enemies of God and those who hate God cannot fight God 
Therefore they come against God's sheltered ones, God's people, and they say, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel will be remembered no more. Think about 1990 and 1991. America is attacking Iraq. And what happened? Who is Iraq attacking in response to the American attack? Israel. Saddam Hussein. Exactly. And this is exactly why the Israeli army right now is in the high alert. Because think about it. You just strike Syria. Yes. Do you think Syria will strike America? No, no, no. Of course not. <laughs> if anything, they're going to do or going to try to do or going to contemplate on doing something to us. And you know that we will never allow rockets flying from Syria to Israel without any consequences. And therefore, my point is this. When we talk about Damascus will be a heap of ruins in Isaiah 17 verse 1, it can only happen in two scenarios. Either they destroy their own capital with all that they're doing, because they're doing a great job, by the way. They destroy themselves. <laughs> or it will be a harsh response or what we call preemptive strike if we know that something terrible is going to fly from their territory yes. to us. Now, these are the only two things I can see. Either they destroy themselves or we destroy. But one thing is for sure. The Bible doesn't tell us who attacks, but the Bible tells us what's going to happen. Yeah. And what's going to happen is Damascus will be a heap of ruins. And Damascus is 60 miles away from here. It's not that far. In fact, on a clear day, clear we see day. The, on a clear day, we see the outskirts of Damascus right over there. And point saying, and let, let that group pass when, when they come. Point saying is that, guys, we need to keep in mind that with all the current events that are happening, eventually... The things that Isaiah the prophet said almost 2,800 years ago are far more accurate than the newspapers of last week. So who do we want to trust? Uh, who do we want to... Th th those analysts that change their mind that in, every other day or that which cannot and will not change. So I, I, I want to encourage you throughout all that mayhem and all those things that are happening, keep your eyes fixed on the Word of God and let the events here confirm what you already know rather than inform what you don't know. You understand that? Because the people of God should not be fearful of all what's going on here. We know exactly no. the end of the book. Absolutely. We know exactly the story. Absolutely. And so what's critical, as I mentioned at the start of this, what's critical about what we are possibly seeing here is uh, possibly, listen, possibly, we are seeing, you know, Sebastian Gorka and a few others, Stratfor and other intelligence agencies have long been saying that for the last several years we've already entered into the, the, the Third World War is underway and it's spooling up. It's very possible. We could have numerous world wars before we see what mm -hmm. nations. You would think that the nations that are mentioned in the Bible, because it's very prominent, Libya is mentioned, Iran, Persia, is mentioned, right? These nations are mentioned, but no Syria. Could it be that Isaiah 17 so devastates Syria because its capital is removed that it's not even in the factor of Ezekiel? So hypothetically, possibly, we don't know. Where We don't say, you know, the Lord told me to tell you. That's insane. We, with Bible open, observe what's going on. We gather as much information as we can, never to be scared about it as believers. Jesus said, listen, before I come back, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. Yeah. He said there's going to be all these perils taking place, earthquakes, events on an increasing magnitude. And we're seeing that. You know, we expect, because we're Americans, we drive through Taco Bell and expect our food in three minutes. And if we don't get it, something's wrong. Listen, God is not driving through a Bible prophecy Taco Bell lines. It moves slowly sometimes. So what you're seeing is things coming together. This I know. We have never seen the world in the condition that it's in as it is now. Mm -hmm. No one ever has. Yes. It's global. It's almost instant. And there are nations either rumoring to go to war or at war now. North Korea, China, the issue of that happening here, Iran, it's, it's amazing what's happening. Yes. Remarkable. Rosh yep. is here. Persia is here. Gomer and the house of Togarmer, which is Turkey, is here. already here. And think about it. 
Russia right now, as we speak, with its long arm, is also setting the stage in Libya yes. and in Sudan. Oh, there's Russian troops yes, in Libya, in Libya and in Sudan. These are the countries that Ezekiel 38 mentions. All the countries that he mentioned are now being manipulated by the Russian, by Gog, the Prince of Magog. And so, guys, never in the history of planet Earth, yeah. we were at that point where Ezekiel was so relevant as it is today. You guys, the president of Egypt, Sisi, he was in Washington last week, and one of the topics of discussion was, listen, listen, one of the topics of discussion was Russian presence on the border Correct. of Egypt and Libya. Mm -hmm. And listen, BBC, CNN, all said that that was false news. There, there are no Russian uh, operatives on the border. And they, on social media, they were Libyans and Egyptians taking pictures yes. of Russians on the border and CNN is saying, there's no such thing, that's false news. They pick up this narrative of false news and they're guilty of false yeah. news. So from the top of the Golan Heights, a mile and a half away from Syria, we just wanted to encourage all of you back home, yeah. around the world and right here, God is in full control and we need to stay on track we need to believe and we need to uh understand that um nothing is going to knock him off his throne Amen. and he's not surprised and i believe with all of my heart that um what's left for us is now to check our own hearts Amen. are we ready for this whole thing god is you know as as dr um, um Heinz Heinz said prophecy is not to scare it's to to prepare so um hey last final thing i want to say to you guys is this and to to all of you that are watching right now are going to watch this facebook live post um this the same prophets that foretold about what's what's happening here the greatest doctrine of all is what's called soteriology see what is that well listen it's the salvation of God provided for you. Jesus Christ died on the cross. It was prophesied in the scriptures. And he died there for your sins. He rose again from the dead. He's the Lord. He's coming back someday to make it all work and make it all right. But until then, you need to put your faith in Jesus. Not some church, not some spirituality, but Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And you're not going to get to the Father but through him. The way is free. But it's not cheap. It cost God the life of his own mm. son. God bless you guys. So God bless you from the top of the Golan Heights. Shalom and goodbye. Amen.